In this video, we'll talk about fat burn supplements and detox plans. The majority of adults in the United States take one or more dietary supplements either every day or occasionally. Today's dietary supplements include vitamins, minerals, herbals and botanicals, amino acids, enzymes, and many other products. Dietary supplements come in a variety of forms, traditional tablets, capsules and powders, as well as drinks and energy bars. Popular supplements include vitamins D and E, minerals like calcium and iron, herbs such as echinacea and garlic, and specialty products like glucosamine, probiotics, and fish oils. The pursuit of health has never been more informed. We know more about the fields of medicine and nutrition than ever. Technological advances now allow scientists and clinicians to predict one's susceptibility to certain diseases or conditions by analyzing the DNA in cells obtained from a cheek swab. We know that the conditions a fetus is exposed to in utero can influence the risk of disease in adulthood. We've come so far in understanding the biology of our bodies and the biochemistry of the nutrients and other substances we ingest. The United States is recognized among the leaders of the world in technology and medicine. And yet, despite all these advances, Americans are unhealthier, more overweight or obese, more prone to chronic disease than ever. Where did we go wrong? All products labeled as a dietary supplement carry a supplement facts panel that lists the contents, amount of active ingredients per serving, and other added ingredients like fillers, binders, and flavorings. The manufacturer suggests the serving size, but you or your healthcare provider might decide that a different amount is more appropriate for you. However, there are things that you really need to know before you start consuming it. Number one, effectiveness. Number two, safety and risk. And number three, quality. Number one, effectiveness. If you don't eat a nutritious variety of foods, some supplements might help you get adequate amounts of essential nutrients. However, supplements can't take the place of the variety of foods that are important to a healthy diet. Scientific evidence shows that some dietary supplements are beneficial for overall health and for managing some health conditions. For example, calcium and vitamin D are important for keeping bones strong and reducing bone loss. Folic acid decreases the risk of certain birth defects, and omega-3 fatty acids from fish oils might help some people with heart disease. Other supplements need more study to determine their value. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, does not determine whether dietary supplements are effective before they are marketed. Number 2. Safety and Risk Many supplements contain active ingredients that can have strong effects in the body. Always be alert to the possibility of unexpected side effects, especially when taking a new product. Supplements are most likely to cause side effects or harm when people take them instead of prescribed medicines or when people take many supplements in combination. Some supplements can increase the risk of bleeding or if a person takes them before or after surgery, they can affect the person's response to anesthesia. Dietary supplements can also interact with certain prescription drugs in ways that might cause problems. Here are some examples for your reference. Vitamin K can reduce the ability of the blood thinner Coumadin to prevent blood from clotting. St. John's wort can speed the breakdown of many drugs including antidepressants and birth control pills and thereby reduce these drugs' effectiveness. Antioxidant supplements like vitamin C and E might reduce the effectiveness of some types of cancer chemotherapy. Keep in mind that some ingredients found in dietary supplements are added to a growing number of foods, including breakfast cereals and beverages. As a result, you may be getting more of these ingredients than you think, and more might not be better. Taking more than you need is always more expensive and can also raise your risk of experiencing side effects. For example, getting too much vitamin A can cause headaches and liver damage, reduce bone strength, and cause birth defects. Excess iron causes nausea and vomiting and may damage the liver and other organs. Be cautious about taking dietary supplements if you're pregnant or nursing. Also, be careful about giving them beyond a basic multivitamin or mineral product to a child. Most dietary supplements have not been well tested for safety in pregnant women, nursing mothers, or children. Number 3. Quality Dietary supplements are complex products. The FDA has established quality standards for dietary supplements to help ensure their identity, purity, strength, and composition. These standards are designed to prevent the inclusion of the wrong ingredient, the addition of too much or too little of an ingredient, the possibility of contamination, and the improper packaging and labeling of a product. The FDA periodically inspects facilities that manufacture dietary supplements. In addition, several independent organizations offer quality testing and allow products that pass these tests to display their seals of approval. 
These seals of approval provide assurance that the product was properly manufactured, contains the ingredients listed on the label, and does not contain harmful levels of contaminants. These seals of approval do not guarantee that a product is safe or effective. Organizations that offer this quality testing include U.S. Pharmacopeia, ConsumerLab.com, and NSF International. For much of the 20th century, nutrition research focused largely on the health risks and benefits of single nutrients. The findings translated into public health messages telling us to reduce fat, limit cholesterol, increase fiber, get more calcium, take vitamins E, C, and D, and so on. But as scientists learn more, they're finding that the health effects of food likely derive from the synergistic interactions of nutrients and other compounds within and among the foods we eat. This has led to a shift from nutrient-based recommendations toward guidelines based on foods and eating patterns. There's no single healthy diet. Many eating patterns sustain good health. What they have in common is lots of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, along with healthy sources of protein and fats. Consistently eating foods like these will help lower your risk for conditions such as heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and certain forms of cancer. If you'd like to make this largely plant-based approach to eating one of your good health goals, well, here's how to get started. First, build a better plate. The healthy eating plate is made up of one half vegetables and fruits, one quarter whole grains, and one quarter healthy protein. Whole and healthy are important words here. Refined grains, think white breads, pastas, and rice, have less fiber and fewer nutrients than whole grains, such as whole wheat bread and brown rice. Healthy proteins include fish, poultry, beans, and nuts, but not red meats or processed meats. Many studies have shown that red meats, and especially processed meats, are linked with colorectal cancer and that you can lower your risk for heart disease by replacing either type of meat with healthier protein sources. So eat red meat sparingly, selecting the leanest cuts, and avoid processed meats altogether. Secondly, pile on the vegetables and fruits. Vegetables and fruits are high in fiber and contain many vitamins and minerals as well as hundreds of beneficial plant chemicals, or phytochemicals, that you can't get in supplements. Diets rich in vegetables and fruit can benefit the heart by lowering blood pressure, cholesterol levels, and inflammation, and improving insulin resistance and blood vessel function. In long-term observational studies, people who eat more fruits and vegetables have a lower risk of heart disease, diabetes, and weight gain, and those who eat more fruit also have a lower risk of stroke. Thirdly, go for the good fat. At one time, we were told to eat less fat, but now we know that it's mainly the type of fat that counts. The most beneficial sources are plants and fish. You can help lower bad LDL cholesterol by eating mostly polyunsaturated fats, including vegetable oils and omega-3 fatty acids found in fish, seeds and nuts, and canola oil, and monounsaturated fats in avocados and many plant-based oils, such as olive oil and canola oil. Saturated fats, mostly found in dairy and meat products, and trans fats, hydrogenated fat found in many fried and baked goods, boost LDL cholesterol and triglycerides, increasing your risk of heart disease. Worse still, trans fats reduce your good HDL cholesterol. Next, drink enough water. Many foods contain water, so you may get enough every day without making a special effort, but it can be helpful to drink water or other no-calorie liquids such as black tea, coffee, or carbonated water with meals or as an alternative to snacking. A reasonable goal is four to six cups of water a day. Finally, eat breakfast. It's easy to skip breakfast when you're in a rush, aren't hungry, or want to cut calories, but a healthy morning meal makes for smaller rises in blood sugar and insulin throughout the day, which can lower your risk of overeating and impulse snacking. Eating breakfast every day is one characteristic common to participants in the National Weight Control Registry who have lost at least 30 pounds and kept the weight off longer than a year. So, should you take supplements? In the 1980s, many nutritionists and some physicians began to recommend and take vitamin supplements. However, as described in Cast of Characters Vitamin A to Zinc, the evidence for the health benefits of most supplements is not strong. Notable exceptions are fish oil for cardiovascular disease and vitamin D for bone health. Although foods that contain vitamin A and beta carotene as well as vitamins B, C, and E are clearly good for health, taking supplements of these vitamins has no proven health benefits. Well, what about a simple multivitamin? These pills, which also usually contain multiple minerals, are the most popular among all dietary supplements. 50% of Americans take them on a regular basis, shelling out more than $20 billion annually on these products. 
On an individual basis, a daily multivitamin won't set you back that much. A year's supply of many popular brands costs about $30. However, despite widespread belief that multivitamins will prevent chronic diseases such as cancer and heart disease, there's no evidence to support such claims. The National Institutes of Health convened a meeting on multivitamin and mineral supplements in May 2006. The state of the science statement it issued was extremely cautious. Present evidence is insufficient to recommend either for or against the use of multivitamin slash multimineral supplements by the American public to prevent chronic disease. The experts noted that the heaviest users of vitamin and mineral supplements are Americans who probably need them the least. Those who are well-educated, have higher incomes, exercise, and already have healthy diets. A 2008 study in Archives of Internal Medicine that tracked nearly 162,000 participants in the Women's Health Initiative found that multivitamins have no effect whatsoever in 10 health-related categories, including cancer, heart attack, and stroke. Supplement takers didn't live any longer either. Here are some potential dangers of consuming supplements. Number one, potential pitfalls. Number two, more isn't always better. Now, let's talk about potential pitfalls. Shopping for any kind of supplement can be confusing. A staggering array of multivitamins and other supplements crowd the shelves of pharmacies, grocery stores, and specialty stores, and many more are now available over the internet. Before you buy, it's wise to realize that some of these products may offer much more, or possibly less, than you really need to enhance your health. Dietary supplements may legally contain vitamins, minerals, herbs, amino acids, enzymes, organ tissues, and a few other substances. In short, practically any ingredient promoted as a way to bolster your diet and presumably your health. The FDA does not certify supplements for safety or effectiveness the way it monitors drugs. Under the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act of 1994, the FDA cannot approve supplements or demand that manufacturers undertake rigorous studies to prove their worth. The FDA doesn't set potency or dosage standards either. Manufacturers are left to police themselves, and before a worrisome supplement can be pulled off the market, the FDA has to prove that it creates a significant health risk. This can be a problem, as is made clear by a January 2009 Consumer Lab report. The Consumer Watchdog Organization tested the quality and contents of 29 of the leading multivitamin and multimineral products for adults and children sold in the United States and Canada. Eight products did not meet the claims stated on their labels or had other quality issues, while another 12 provided levels that may be too high for healthy people. For example, one men's multivitamin supplement contained just over 2,000 micrograms of folic acid, which is twice the safe upper limit for that vitamin. While supplement manufacturers can't legally claim to prevent, treat, or cure specific diseases, they can come pretty close. They're allowed to make structure function claims that sound impressive to most consumers. A product may build strong teeth or improve memory or boost the immune system. Manufacturers can make these assertions without supplying a stitch of proof to any agency. Your cue for healthy skepticism should be the words printed alongside, this statement has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. Certain health claims backed by substantial scientific agreement and not limited to particular brands can appear on supplement bottles. For example, supplement manufacturers can advertise that calcium helps protect against osteoporosis and folic acid may prevent neural tube defects in fetuses because these statements are borne out by science and have been carefully evaluated. Also, more isn't always better. Many people who take supplements subscribe to the idea that more is better without carefully considering the arguments for or against their choices. They may take a handful of other supplements along with their multivitamin. At best, they may be wasting their money. At worst, they may be endangering their health. Take vitamins C and A, for example. Once your blood level of vitamin C reaches the saturation point, which occurs if you take about 200 milligrams per day, your body usually excretes the excess. That's why vitamin C toxicity rarely occurs. However, people who consistently take too much vitamin A won't be as fortunate. Because fat-soluble vitamins remain in the body, they can more easily build to toxic levels. A pregnant woman who takes too much vitamin A risks birth defects to her fetus. Excess vitamin A also compromises bone health and blood clotting, and it can overstimulate your immune system. Many consumers are spurred to take excessive doses by over-enthusiastic news stories on the potential benefits of certain vitamins and minerals. Remember, though, that the good news from the latest study may eventually prove true, or it may be refuted by other studies. Often, promising test tube and animal studies don't pan out in people, and certain types of human studies offer more definitive information than others. 
Sometimes, exciting results from initial observational studies aren't confirmed by randomized controlled trials, which are considered the gold standard of research. And even these studies often have their limitations. It's generally safest to wait for evidence to accumulate before jumping on the supplement bandwagon. Consider the potential risks, possible benefits, and costs. What about specialized supplements aimed at women, men, and seniors? While some of these supplements may be helpful in certain cases, others are merely marketing gimmicks designed to enhance profits rather than your health. Products vary wildly. Read the labels to make sure you get what you need while staying within safe limits. If you're a woman, which vitamins and minerals are most helpful for you? Well, that depends partly on your age and on childbearing concerns. Folic acid supplements are necessary if there's a chance that you could become pregnant, and iron is important for you if you're still menstruating. It's essential that you get enough folic acid to prevent birth defects called neural tube defects, which develop in the earliest days and weeks of pregnancy. Because not every pregnancy is planned, most experts suggest that all women capable of becoming pregnant take a daily multivitamin that has at least 400 micrograms of folic acid. Your doctor may suggest taking more than that amount if you plan to get pregnant and have previously had a child with a neural tube defect. To replace iron lost during monthly periods, you need a multivitamin or women's supplement with iron. Iron deficiency saps your energy, eventually leaving you weak and tired. In the United States, 1 in 10 women and girls who menstruate are deficient in iron. The recommended daily amount of iron for adult women ages 19 to 50 is 18 milligrams. If you're pregnant, you need larger amounts of certain vitamins and minerals, particularly iron and folic acid. Prenatal vitamins, which can be purchased by prescription or over-the-counter, meet these needs. It is important not to take other supplements unless specifically advised by a qualified healthcare professional. The earliest weeks of pregnancy are crucial in the fetus's development, so the sooner in pregnancy you start taking a prenatal vitamin, the better. If you plan to get pregnant or learn that you are, talk with your doctor right away to find out which prenatal supplement would be best for you to take. During pregnancy, your iron requirements increase to 27 milligrams and your folic acid requirement to 600 micrograms. The calcium RDA remains at 1,000 milligrams for women ages 19 and over, although some clinicians suggest adding calcium during pregnancy for extra insurance. As for women who reached menopause, unless your doctor advises otherwise, you can switch to a supplement that reduces or eliminates iron. Diet alone should supply enough iron and prevent a possible iron overload. Iron overload can damage the liver and other body tissues, making diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, and liver cancer more likely. Supplements designed for older women typically have little or no iron and more calcium and vitamin D. After menopause or a hysterectomy, you need only 8 milligrams of iron daily. Many experts shy away from any iron supplementation for men. That's because men, like women who no longer menstruate, aren't typically losing much iron. For that reason, supplements aimed specifically at men generally reduce iron or drop it from the formula. This can help prevent iron overload, which can stem from taking more iron than necessary through supplements. Iron overload may also occur because of a common genetic defect that occurs more often in men than women. Iron overload can damage the liver and other body tissues, raising the risk for diabetes, heart disease, arthritis, and liver cancer. Men's multivitamin and mineral formulations typically add or increase selenium and lycopene too, which may protect against prostate cancer and other types of cancer. Some drop calcium entirely. Formulas with low or no calcium are fine for men as long as they get adequate amounts of calcium in their diets to prevent osteoporosis. Exercise, coupled with vitamin D and vitamin K, is more important for bone health in men. Products aimed at older people tend to boost the amount of certain B vitamins, partly because many elderly men and women have trouble absorbing vitamin B12. These products also tend to add antioxidants and often vitamin D and selenium. There is little evidence to support the value of antioxidant supplements. Some experts recommend getting at least 2,000 IU of vitamin D daily after age 70. As you age, your skin loses some of its ability to produce vitamin D from sunlight, and many older people don't spend that much time in the sun. As for selenium, evidence suggests no benefit to this mineral. Until more information is available, or unless your doctor gives you other advice, a daily multivitamin should offer enough B vitamins. However, if you're over 70 and get little sun exposure, you may need to add a separate vitamin D supplement. Detoxification is a normal process within the body as it neutralizes and eliminates toxins through the major organs such as our colon, liver, kidney, lungs, lymph, and skin. Our bodies do it naturally every day. 
In fact, it's one of our most basic automatic functions, but what if our self-cleaning systems overloaded by our unhealthy lifestyle and exposure to environmental toxins? According to many healing experts, detoxification through special cleansing programs may be the missing link to disease prevention, especially for immune deficiency diseases like cancer, arthritis, diabetes, chronic fatigue syndrome, and candida. Our chemicalized diet with an overabundance of animal protein, too much saturated fat, and too much caffeine and alcohol radically alters our internal ecosystem. But even if your diet is good, a cleanse can restore your immune system and protect yourself against environmental toxins that pave the way for disease-bearing bacteria, viruses, and parasites. In the animal kingdom and in traditional cultures, routine fasting and allowing the body time to clean itself out has been a normal practice. Just think how many showers you take in a year to clean the outside of your body, and then how many cleanses you do in a year to clean the inside of your body. Here's a quick detox plan for you. On rising, take a large glass and add the juice out of one fresh lemon and crush a thumbnail size of fresh ginger. Fill the rest of the glass with room temperature or warm water. Before starting work and breakfast, mix wheat grass or barley grass powder and spring water to make a green drink to alkalize and energize the cells of your body and accelerate the cleansing process. It'll taste a little weird to start with, but as your bloodstream pH levels drop, your taste buds will adjust to the flavor. For breakfast, break your fast with a fresh vegetable juice of four medium-sized carrots, one beetroot, one cucumber, one handful of baby spinach, and one quarter cup parsley. Take 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C and two 1,000 milligram flaxseed oil capsules. Between breakfast and lunch, have a caffeine-free detox tea of peppermint, ginseng, licorice root, ginger, or chamomile, or a special natural laxative tea. More green drink as you need it. During lunch, have a small to medium serving of brown rice with a mixture of raw and steamed vegetables. Choose from broccoli, shiitake mushrooms, bok choy, radishes, rocket, spring onions, watercress, garlic, and ginger. Season with sea greens and flavor with one cup of miso soup or lemon juice and extra virgin olive oil. Take one 1,000 milligram tablet of vitamin C. In mid-afternoon, have another vegetable juice of carrot, apple, and ginger to boost your energy levels. For early dinner, have a freshly squeezed vegetable juice of two carrots, two tomatoes, a handful of spinach leaves, two celery ribs, half a cucumber, and half a green bell pepper. Add one tablespoon of wheatgrass or barley powder. Take one 1,000 milligram tablet of vitamin C. Before bed, relax your body with a detox tea of peppermint, ginseng, licorice root, ginger, or chamomile tea, or fresh mint and green tea with cardamom pods. And there you have it. Follow this program as closely as possible for a minimum of three days to really see the results. You can experiment with the vegetable juices throughout the day, but just make sure you're not adding too many sweet fruits. Ideally, none at all, as these add to the sugar or acidic load in the body, which is what we're trying to avoid during this cleanse. So, what's the recipe? 1. Detox meal consists of pesto mushroom and black olive tapenade. 2. Detox water consists of slim down detox water and watermelon detox water. Here's the recipe for pesto mushroom. 20 button mushrooms or 4 portobello mushrooms, 1 cup walnuts, 1 half cup pine nuts, 3 cups basil, 1 half cup olive oil, 2 to 3 cloves of garlic, 1 teaspoon of sea salt, and 2 tablespoons of lemon juice substitutes. You can use rocket to fill out the basil if you're short. And here's the cooking method. 1. Wash and stem the mushrooms and lay out on a serving plate. 2. Place all remaining ingredients in a food processor and blend until smooth. 3. Fill the mushrooms with pesto and serve fresh. 4. If desired for a more crispy taste, dehydrate for 5-6 to six hours. Mushrooms are one of the best natural sources of niacin, which is essential for energy production, brain function, and the skin. It also helps in balancing blood sugar levels and lowering cholesterol. Nuts, seeds, and their cold-pressed oils should be included in your diet on a regular basis as they contain high levels of the essential fatty acids, or EFAs, or good fats. Additionally, they're also a powerhouse of nutrients and contain high forms of digestible protein, antioxidant vitamins A, B, C, and E, calcium, magnesium, potassium, zinc, iron, selenium, and manganese. So, what about black olive tapenade? Simple. 3 cups of pitted black olives, 1 half cup olive oil, one small handful parsley, optional, two tablespoons lemon juice, three cloves garlic, and one tablespoon sea salt. Firstly, one, process everything except olives in a blender or food processor until smooth. Two, 
Add olives and pulse until olives are roughly chopped. 3. To serve, use as a dip with flax crackers. Olives and olive oil are very rich in antioxidants. Antioxidants deactivate free radicals, allowing us to live longer, overcome illness, and maintain more acute mental and muscular faculties. Olives display antifungal and antibacterial properties and are used in a detoxifying diet. Garlic contains high doses of natural sulfur, or MSM. MSM provides elasticity, movement, healing, and repair within the tissues. It greatly enhances the structural integrity of connective tissue and joint cartilage and has been shown to reverse arthritic conditions including pain and inflammation. MSM is renowned as a beautifying nutrient, the best natural food cosmetic in the world. MSM, through its ability to continuously build and rebuild perfect collagen and keratin, is able to make our hair, nails, and skin shine with radiance. You can buy MSM on its own, which we recommend as a supplement to a healthy diet. The powder tastes awful, so we'd suggest the capsules. Parsley is a nutrient powerhouse containing more vitamin C than citrus fruit. It even contains vitamin B12, mostly thought to be only bioavailable in dairy and meat products. B12, apart from being found in parsley, is also available in blue-green algae and spirulina and is normally synthesized in the intestine when an abundance in healthy bacteria is present. B12 is needed in the body from making use of protein and helps the blood carry oxygen. Also, here's the recipe for slim down detox water. 1 half gallon spring water. 1 half grapefruit, sliced. 1 half cucumber, sliced. 2 to 3 mint leaves. 1 half lemon, sliced. And 1 half lime, sliced. Simply combine all the ingredients in a pitcher. Allow the ingredients to chill in the refrigerator for 1 to 2 hours before serving. Drink throughout the day or discard after 24 hours. Here's what you need for watermelon detox water. 2 cups seedless watermelon, cubed, and 4 cups of water. Firstly, place watermelon in pitcher and cover with water. Let it sit for a few hours in the refrigerator before drinking so the water gets all the nice watermelon flavor. Lastly, here's the recipe for raspberry and mint scented water. 2 liters cold spring water or filtered tap water. 2 tablespoons raspberries, fresh or frozen. 2 tablespoons fresh mint leaves. And 1 lime. To get more flavor and juice out of your lime, microwave for 30 seconds. When cool, slice. Place raspberries, mint, lime, and water in a large jug. Stir and serve. And there you have it. All the knowledge you need on supplements and a secret detox plan and recipes. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.